And listen, God, one of the things that I notice about God in scripture that leads to breakthroughs, that leads to him filling up uh, the place with his presence, with his Shekinah glory, is repentance, prayers of repentance. And there are times when we don't always really know what's going on with us individually, internally, psychologically, emotionally, or spiritually. And those are those times when it's good to say, Lord, whatever I may be doing incorrectly, whatever I may be approaching in the wrong way, or I may be handling something or someone or a situation in the wrong way, please forgive me. I don't mean to. He knows your heart. He knows whether there's malice or whether there's just ignorance or or thoughtlessness or things just don't occur to you. So always keep yourself in that place of repentance, that place of humility, because God hears the prayers of the humble and he resists the proud, right? Okay, you get that. So let's go with this. Second Chronicles chapter 7, and I'm going to start reading at 13. And I want you guys to go with me there. Now, what happens before this is the, the, the temple is built and it's consecrated to God. And God fills the temple so his Shekinah glory is so strong that the priest can't even enter. It's just too overwhelming for them. But what I want to share with you is that the prayer that was prayed was a prayer of repentance. And a lot of times we think, you know, yes, the word says come boldly to the throne of grace. But we also have to remember that there are times when we really have to humble ourselves. And we really have to say, you know, Lord, um, I'm not really sure how well I'm doing this. I'm not sure if I'm even anywhere near your will, let alone in the center of your will. So redirect me or help me or open my eyes. And then when you ask God to do that, you have to open yourself to hearing what people say and understanding how you come across to other people because sometimes God will show you you by what other people say. Sometimes God will show you you through dreams and he'll show you someone else doing something and you will see it and be totally turned off and then God may tell you that is you. So there are a lot of different ways God will show you, but you have to have a humble enough spirit to take into consideration you may be mishandling some things. You may not be doing things as well as you possibly could. There may be a pride issue. There may be a fear issue or issues dealing with insecurities that makes it hard for you to hear words of correction. There have been times in my life when I felt pounced upon. It seemed like one person had something to say, then another person had something to say. I felt like it was a downpour of, of criticism. Just everybody found fault with me. And I was getting offended until I went to the Lord. And when I went to the Lord, he humbled my spirit and made me consider the fact that there might be some truth. So just to let you know, when you're willing to acknowledge truth, no matter where it comes from, no matter how nasty it might smell, no matter how nasty it might sound or how nasty it might taste, what God always wants us to do is get the truth out of it and go with the rest. You can get rid of the rest, but get that truth. Always ask God, Lord, don't let me bypass it. If there's any truth in this, don't let me miss it. Help me see it. Help me, help me get the memo. All right, so I'm going to read to you what God says, because this is the benefit of having a humble spirit that is willing to hear, willing to adjust, willing 
to totally repent, which means change your ways or direction or methods. All right, here we go. Um, and I say that, I got to say this because it's coming to my mind right now. You know how Jesus talks about the wine, the old wine and then in, in the new wine skins. When you pour old wine into new wine skins or you put new wine into old wine skins, mm -hmm, the, the old wine skins don't welcome the new wine. And that's the way a lot of us get. You know, we are setting our ways. We have our own way of doing things. And sometimes God's trying to introduce something that will make things better. But we want the old wine because we think the old wine is better. That's that's what I know. That's what I do. I do me, boo, and you do you, boo. So what happens is we sometimes bypass the help God is sending us or the advice God is sending us because we see it our way. And being opinionated and prideful can cut off or short circuit, circumvent, or cancel out some of the blessings God may have for us because we are not willing to take another approach. Here's another example real quick, and then I'm going to read the word. Milton, my beautiful husband, used to tell me years ago, and I, I listened, it really made a, a difference. He said, when you are driving, Learn different routes. If you if you go from your house to Sears or from your house to L.A. or your house to Glendale and you are set in a particular route that you always take because you know that that is the route, you know that route like the back of your hand. He said you never know what could happen on that route. Always take a little time on a day when you have some extra hours to spare and explore different routes, different avenues that will get you to the same destination in a total different way. It's always good to know two or three different ways to get to, get to one place because you never know if one way might be blocked, hindered, or hampered in any way. You just never know what could happen. It could be a, a traffic jam, an accident, a roadblock. You could get off, take another route and get there. Why? Because you have explored other routes in advance. So you're already prepared for the detour. You have detours in your mind. So when you have detours in your mind, you also have an open mind to take a different approach, a different uh, methodology or whatever. I may be using the word incorrectly, but you understand what I'm saying. Okay, now let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 7, starting at verse 13. And this is... Starting at 12, I got to say this. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place, that's the temple that he consecrated and built and consecrated to God, to myself for a house of sacrifice. 13, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence, among my people. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Father, I pray for your heavy anointing on this word. Forgive us all for sin and fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit to deliver and receive your word according to your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord. What happens is God is trying to help us understand that when we humble ourselves, know that we are not the last word on a particular way, a particular route, a particular method. Understand that we may be getting it wrong and don't even know it. Understand that we may be going the hard way and God may be trying to show us an easy route. Understand that somebody, here's an example. Years ago, uh, when I was just in my 20s, 
one of my neighbors was at the house. She was fixing dinner for my father. I had to go to work. And when I came back, she was just about done, but she was getting ready to cook liver. And my father was used to, now my mother was not a good cook, but she was good at that liver. All right. She could make that liver so tender, crunchy on the outside, but when you when you put it in your mouth, the crunch would be there, but inside it would just melt in your mouth. She knew how to make liver so tender. So my neighbor was cooking. Now, my neighbor was old enough to be my mother. She had been cooking since she was a kid. Very good cook. And I said, could I give you a suggestion? And she said, about what? I said, about the liver. And she said, okay. So I, I told her how my mother cooked liver. And I did one so she could see it. And she tasted it. And she was like, wow, you're right. But you could see the smirk on her face at first. Because she was like, what's this little... Uh, uh, um, what's that word they use? What's this little pipsqueak going to tell me? I'm all, I, you know, I, I, I change diapers on people her age and she going to sit up here and tell me how to cook. And I've been cooking before she was a twinkle in her mother's eye. Well, guess what? She humbled herself and she allowed me to show her another method. And from that day on, she told me I don't cook liver any other way but the way Pat showed me. Now, some people might not have received that. They might have gone through a litany of all the ways they cook liver and all the places they cook liver and all the important people that ate their liver and said it was phenomenal. And how could they improve on something that was already perfect? But she humbled herself and she found out I found a better method than the one I had. And I thought mine was pretty good. So what I'm trying to say is there are times when you are used to being you. That's it. You're used to being you. You're set. You're comfortable. And you can do it with your eyes closed. But God may be saying, baby, I want you to open your eyes because I want to show you something new. I want to show you something that you've never done before. But you'll have to apply yourself to learning all over again. And I know that's what you don't want to do. So years ago, here's another example. I'm going to get back to the word. I'm not done. Years ago, I had my own hair salon. God sat me down one day and made it occur to me. I know he brought it to my mind. I said, Lord, how can I make more money doing less work? And I had my, I had a pen and pad next to my desk and I didn't have a customer at that time. So I was spending that time at the shop talking to the Lord, getting his advice. He didn't say a mumbling word, but he literally showed me the way my day would go. And I never worked with a hairdresser that had an assistant. Never. God showed me what my day would be like with an assistant. And I was like, an assistant? I never even considered having an assistant. Never dawned on me to do that. And God showed me the whole course. When I'm doing this, the assistant's doing that. When I'm doing that, the assistant's doing this. And the whole thing worked like a dance. And when it all got through, I was able to get four or five full weaves done at the in the same time it took me by myself to do three and after paying the assistant well over a hundred dollars for the day's work and that that was less than eight hours back then that was way back what happened was i made three times the amount of money or twice at least double the amount of money so my point to you 
is when God is trying to show you something, sometimes you have to change your route, take a detour, check this route out, explore, venture in, venture out, look, listen, observe, because you just might learn something that would open your eyes to a whole new level, a whole new arena. But if you're closed-minded, if you're bullheaded, if you're prideful, if you're stuck on stupid or stuck on you, boo, guess what? There are things you will never learn, things that will always come hard because you are opinionated. You refuse to accept any other way but your way, my way or the highway. Watch that because you could be kicking against God. God could be blessing you and you could be trashing his blessing because it doesn't line up with your understanding. And what does God say? My ways are above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. But are you willing to listen? Are you willing to take into consideration? God may have a whole new level to take you to, but he's got to take you a particular route you don't want to go through because you don't want to apply yourself to learning anything new. And sometimes you got to park. Here, here's an example. Here's an example. Years ago, I had to learn a different method of driving because I was used to driving automatics and I was trying to get a job driving school buses and back then school buses were stick shift double clutch stick shift and I didn't even know how to drive a stick shift car but check it out my father wanted to give me his stick shift falcon I didn't know how to drive it I just couldn't get the hang of it so when I got the job and I was being trained to drive the school bus. I had to go through training. That meant everything in my life was put on pause for six weeks before. And I had to take the DMV test to get my class two license. I was double clutching that bus like a champ. I got that baby. But guess what? What I didn't expect was and, and that took a sacrifice of time i had to lay a lot of things aside because that was an eight hour thing for six weeks eight hours a day training on that bus we were all day on that bus everybody had to get behind the wheel learn this learn that learn how to maneuver in and out of traffic learn where to start your turn where to end it i mean all kind of stuff how to park all of it so what god was showing me was there are times when you have to learn something new over here, but you have no idea when you learn this headache over here, this pain in the butt. That over there is like duck soup. And you're like, what? So this is what happened. After I learned to drive the stick, the double clutch on the bus, when I got in my father's Falcon and tried it once again, I was driving like I had been driving stick shifts all my life. All of a sudden, I got the memo. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. And it was so easy to drive that stick shift. Now to this day, if I get in a stick shift and I don't hardly ever drive one, I can get right in there and, and, and handle it. No problem. So the point is, there are times when God is trying to, you know, we have to be open to different ways. We have to be open to maybe we, like, for example, God gave me a dream about myself. This is when repentance comes into play. And in the dream, I was watching this female and she was so stuck on stupid. I wanted to slap the living daylights out of her. I wanted to shake her. Woman, are you crazy? What's wrong with you? And when I woke up from that dream, I'm not going to tell you all the details. I, want, I don't want you to know how stupid I was. Anyway, I woke up from the dream 
And I asked the Lord, why would you have me dream about somebody so stupid? So what was wrong with that chick? And God spoke to me and said, that is you. Oh my God, you talk about a slap in the face. I felt so insulted by God. I, I actually told him, out of all these years, you've never hurt my feelings, but Lord, you hurt my feelings this time. Oh, I look like that to you? See, there are times when God has to tell you about yourself because people might be trying to tell you and you ain't hearing it. But God knows how to get through to you if you're open. He's not going to force you to see it if you refuse to see it. He will leave you with you, boo. Mm -hmm. Remember that. So another time he showed me me was when I was in church. See, I'll tell on myself so y'all can see yourself because I don't care what you think about me. I got the victory when God showed me myself. Because I'm, I'm not going to fight to keep it my way or the highway. Because I know that's a losing battle when it comes to walking with the Lord. So here, And it sabotages your own success when you do that. I was sitting there in church. And God, I mean the Holy Spirit spoke just as clear as a bell. And said to me, you are jealous of her. <laughs> ready to debate with the almighty all knowing all <laughs> all, all seeing everything God I, I couldn't believe that he would say that about me but as soon as I got ready to open my mouth to say what do you mean he ticker tape my thoughts not my words because I never spoke one nasty word about anybody during that time it was in my thoughts and the Lord played my thoughts that I thought to myself. See, your thoughts count now. They, they do count. Your attitude counts. <laughs> and I'm telling you, when he played back my thoughts, oh, it don't take all that. Oh, look at that. Look at the sheet. Might as well be in the nightclub. And the Lord showed me that right there. That's the jealousy. All those thoughts or based on your jealousy because you want what she has, you know you don't have it. That woman could sing rings around everybody in that church. Beautiful voice. She was like another Aretha Franklin. I couldn't come close to a pinky, to a fingernail in her pinky when it comes to the talent she had. And I resented her for it and didn't realize it till the Holy Spirit showed me. See, sometimes you got to sit down when you know you're under attack or you're under a lot of criticism or, or it seems like people are annoyed by you or there's a lot of friction in your life and relationships seem to be going south. No matter which way you turn, relationships just, and you think it's the devil attacking you. Sometimes it's God trying to hold the mirror up so you can see the man in the mirror. And if you're not willing to look, you will, you will blame the devil. You blame your mama. You blame your papa. You blame your granddaddy. You blame your grandchild. You blame your neighbor. You blame the cops. You blame the storekeeper. You blame the banker. You blame everybody. And you got all your rationalizations of why you're not the one at fault. You're just a victim. Mm -hmm. And here's the sad part. The perpetrator that's attacking the poor little victim, which is you, is probably also you. The one that's holding you back, that's sabotaging you, is probably you. Why? Because you won't Humble yourself. Seek his face. Pray. Turn from your wicked ways. You can't turn from your wicked ways if you don't acknowledge your wicked ways. Just because we say doesn't mean we don't have ugly ways, y'all. Just because we say it doesn't mean that we are perfect. No, we are constantly a work in progress. We are constantly under renovation, which means things constantly need to be fixed in us. 
Because we are a mess. Toe up from the flow up. If you can humble yourself and say, Lord, whatever it takes, whatever I got to do to grow, whatever I have to do to get out of your way and my way, help me. Help me do so. And be willing to take it. I remember uh, my old pastor years ago, his name was Pastor M. Tyrone Cushman, used to say, if you can take it, you can make it. And there are times you just got to take it and take it and take it till you're gagging off of it. And you wonder what's wrong. Why is everybody, what is going on? What kind of attack from Satan is this? And it could be just God trying to help you see something. But you see it as an attack from the devil. Mm -hmm. That's the sad part about life. Sometimes we don't get the memo. Sometimes we get the mail. You ever get the mail from your mailbox and you pile it up and you look at it and you say, okay, okay, okay. The rest of it say, oh, I'll look at that later. That's the way we do God. I'll look at that later. I don't want to deal with that right now. No, I got stuff to do, places to go, people to see, mm -hmm. things to do. I got bigger fish to fry. I ain't got time for all that. And God may be saying, that's the thing that you really need to put your time on is all that. Because if you don't handle all that, I can't get you over there. I can't get you all this that I have planned for you because you won't handle all that. You won't deal with it. As long as you don't deal with it. See, a lot of you, you're dealing, you're, you're dealing with life through scars, psychological scars. You're dealing with life through subtleties. You don't even recognize that you're operating as someone who's been victimized by abuse, someone who's been victimized by neglect, someone who has been ignored, someone who has been put down, or someone who has just not felt like anybody valued you. And that had a major effect on you. So you go through life and you navigate based on all of the things that went wrong in your life. And everybody in the present is being dealt with from the symptoms of your past because you're filtering everything through the past. But I'm, I'm going to tell you from experience, when God heals the wounds, I mean totally heals the wounds from the past, you find that the things in your present don't reflect from the past anymore. You see it through different eyes. Why? Because you're not looking at it through the eyes of insecurity. No, you're not looking at it through the eyes of rejection. No, you're not looking at it through the eyes of neglect and abuse. You're not looking at it flinching through life. What's going to go wrong now? What are they going to do to me? How are they going to stab me in my back? What are they going to say about me? How are they going to tear me down? You know, you don't see people as, as enemies in the making. Because that back then when it happened is healed. Why is it healed? Because you didn't just pursue God on how do I do this and what I do here and what I do here and help me get this done, help me get that done. No, you're pursuing God. Lord, do an inner search. Search my heart. Search my spirit. See if there be any wicked way in me. Correct me, readjust me, realign me, heal me on the inner man, strengthen me on the inner man, deliver me from the roots of rejection, from the roots of abandonment, from the roots of the lack of affection, from the roots of the lack of being valued, from the roots of being bullied, from the roots of whatever your roots are. You may not even know what half of them are. But ask God to bring them to the surface and skim them off the top so that you can live your life with freedom. You can live the abundant life. You can live a, live a full life. You can be the fullness of you. All that God wanted you to be, you can become. Why? Because you won't even let you be in the way of your own growth. So 
If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That does not just de- that is not just depicting your land, baby. It's your whole territory, your whole sphere of influence will be healed. Everything will start to line up like little ducks in a row because you're getting rid. You're driving out the enemy. You're driving yourself out of the way. You're you're mortifying the deeds of the flesh. You're killing your own attitudes by putting them in the light of God's truth. And what, what does Jesus say? You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And some of you will not face the truth about yourself. So you have a very difficult time. You don't handle criticism. You don't handle constructive uh, suggestions. You don't handle somebody trying to show you a different way. Why? I know what I'm doing. You ain't got to tell me. I know what I'm doing here. Don't treat me like I'm stupid. Pride. And you don't even sniff it. You don't smell it. You're not aware of it. Ha! But God is. And he will keep chipping away at that thing until you finally concede. And if you never concede, you never get what he has on the other side of that victory. Because you got to win that victory to get that blessing. You got to open it. You got to put your hand on that door. You got to open the door if you want to get in. Enter in, baby. You don't know what you're entering in, but God has things waiting for you. And But you got to enter in. You got to go the route to get there. Then you got to put your hand on your door and you got to open the door. Some of you got that door locked. You have that door locked with padlocks and all kind of uh, all kind of crazy locks on it. Why? Because that's your turf. Ain't nobody going to trespass. But you need to open that door. What does the song say? All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, Oh, I got to sing it or else I forget it. So, you know, don't listen to the voice. Listen to these words. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. Earthly treasures all forsaken. Mm, in his presence, daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to him, I, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. You know, when you surrender all, You don't even count in the equation. I remember when I first got saved and they sang that song. I remember in my heart, I wanted God to take over. Sometimes when we are saved and we walk with the Lord, we think we want God to take over. You can have this, Lord. You can have that. Oh, I give you me. But you got them little hidden closets and things that you got locked up in your basement. You won't let them have that because it hurts you too much to give it up. But when you get that up, oh my God, the blessings that God has for you. You'll never understand it until you really, really, really humble yourself and give it. Give it, baby. Give it all to him. Casting all your care on him because he cares for you. Give up your rights to be right. Give up your rights to be the genius. Give up your pride and allow yourself to feel humiliated. But grow, learn from it. Don't resist God, resist the devil so he can flee. Don't resist God. 
Whatever you do. So, I say all that to say, please humble yourself. And in verse 15, it says, Now mine eyes shall be opened, and my knees attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. What did God say to Abraham when Abraham was willing to give up his only son? To God, God said, now I know, in essence, I know where you really stand, and in blessing, I will bless you. He promised, he swore to himself that in blessing, he would bless Abraham. Can God say that to you, or are you still resisting him every time he wants to make you grow? Okay, I'm done. Time is up. I don't want to be two hours trying to preach a sermon. The Holy Spirit will have to do the rest. God bless you. Turn to God. Relinquish your rights and surrender it all to him. And you'll be shocked how much easier life can be. How much easier your success will be. How much easier your growth will be. Your relationships will be. When you turn it all over to him, surrender it all. <laughs> surrender it all. Humble yourself. Seek his face. Turn from your wicked ways. It doesn't mean you're being a wicked person. It just means that in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. And if it's no good thing, that means there's wickedness in this flesh. <laughs> That's our propensity. Give it all to God. Give it all to God, y'all, and watch. Watch what he does in your life. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in the name of Jesus. Amen.